Okay, hi, uh, my name is Derek and I'm your instructor for our uh, machine learning and uh, data analytics class. Um, this video is kind of the second one here of, of our first week. Um, I'm going to go through some of the uh, kind of the more advanced um, features, some of the things that I think would be very helpful for you to be familiar with for our class in terms of uh, programming with, with Python here, okay? So um, we're looking at the data structures and objects, or the data structures and classes uh, <clears throat> notebook here. Um, so uh, in the first part of this notebook, I'm going to go over some kind of higher level data structures or containers. Um, and then I want to look, talk a little bit about object-oriented programming and also about functional programming, if I get a chance here. Um, Okay, so, there we go. Um, so, uh, there, there's, there's quite a bit in this notebook, so I'm probably going to go through some of this pretty fast. I might skip over a little bit of it, a few things. Um, I, I just want to make certain that you know about kind of the, the main um, data structures that are available to you in Python. So, strings, lists, dictionaries, tuples sets, um, and and then we got a few other things that I want to talk about, okay? So, um, strings in Python um, are, are basically se sequences of characters, right? Um, I mean, a, a string is actually, you know, it's not just a simple ASCII character. It, it uh, supports, you know, kind of modern... Um, um, Rep character representations, so so it can, it can do international characters and that kind of thing. But um, for you know, uh, for our purposes uh, for this class, you can mostly think of uh, uh, a string as just a sequence of characters, right? So you can use either single quotes um, or double quotes for for a string literal. Okay, so if you're from a um, If you're from a C background, oops, I meant to do double quotes there. So if you're from a C background, uh, single quotes and double quotes mean something different in C and C++. Single quotes were for characters, but in Python, really, um, there's no, the, the, you can use either one as a, you know, indicator around a string, okay? The only reason why you might want to use the double quotes is if you want to put single quotes inside of a string or vice versa, right? So, um, so here we've got two strings, one called fruit, one called other fruit. But if you wanted to, if you put the double quotes around there, then you could put double, then you could put single quotes inside of your string, right? So, so yeah, here the double quotes aren't actually part of the string. So, um, strings are sequences. Um, so I'm going to talk a lot about sequences. Uh, so in, in, in Python, a sequence is really kind of a high-level abstraction. So anything that you can index um, by a integer index, um, you can think of as a sequence, all right? So strings, you can index the items in the sequence by zero. So th this, you know, again, th this looks kind of like um, array indexing from Java or C++ or something like that, right? So if I want the first in character, it's at index zero. So um, indexing is zero-based in Python, um, like C and Java. Um, So you can get any valid character. So if I want to get the third character um, at index two, I can get that from my fruit. Um, if you try and access a character that's beyond the end of the array, you get an exception thrown. Um, oops, um, if I name it correctly, not, you won't get a name error. You'll get a uh, index error. The string is out of range, right? So. Um, <clears throat> Sequences like strings and lists later on are safer than arrays in C, so the language is going to be actually checking to make certain that you're not making an illegal reference to something beyond the 
beyond the bounds of the array of or, or the, of the sequence. Okay, so I got to try and keep myself from saying array all the time because these are more than arrays. But but the indexing looks like arrays that uh, you might be most familiar with. All right. So um, so all the the things that you might be familiar with for if if you've used uh, um, um, something that has zero based indexing arrays or sequences. Uh, holds here. So in, so the sequence starts at index 0. Um, if I have an array of size 6, then the actual last valid index is index 5. Right? So if I want to get the last A in banana here, I have to go to 6 minus 1 or, or index 5. Right. Um, so and you, can add, you can index anywhere inside of the array. So, uh, length is a built-in function, so you, you can pretty much say anything that's a sequence, and again, sequences are really kind of fundamental, so um, strings, lists, uh, sets, tuples are all sequences in Python here, okay? Um, they, they all kind of, if you know what object-oriented inheritance is, they all are really kind of derived from this idea of a sequence, all right? So anyway, um, instead of hard coding in the length, we can use the built-in function to get the, the, the number of items in our sequence, so the number of characters in our string here, right? Um, so I already mentioned this, so, you know, uh, so, so the valid indexes are from 0 to 5, so if you try and um, get a character, if you try and index past the end of the array, like, like go to index 6, uh, you'll get a, again, you'll get the index error there, correct? because again, the length is 6, so you can't actually access the, a value at index 6. The, the valid indexes are from 0 to 5 for this sequence with 6 characters in it, all right? So, so yeah, to get the last character, you always have to use length minus 1, if, if length or, or um, length um, like that, length dynamic. Um, okay, so um, we didn't talk about for loops in the previous video, so there is another type of looping structure in Python. Uh, but I, th this one, I, if, if you're familiar with for loops in C, don't think of these as for loops. So the main purpose of a for loop is to iterate over a sequence, okay? So, so the, the idiom uh, for for loops is you do for something in a sequence, okay? So if I ask for four letter in fruit, it will iterate over the six letters in the fruit. So the first time through the loop, we get B, letter gets assigned to B, the first character in fruit, or the character index zero, right? So, I mean, you know, again, you could use index control loop. So you, you could create an index variable, start it at zero, and use like a while loop, right, to do banana, to, to access all the characters in the sequence, right? Uh, but, you know, if you only need the value, you know, don't, don't use index control loops. If, if, use a for loop where you're getting the, the, the items from the sequence one by one, all right? And also, if, if you really do need both the index and the value at that index in a sequence, again, still don't use like a while loop where you're explicitly setting the index variable. This is the preferred um, idiom. Okay, so there's a function called enumerate, um, and you, you can um, test what enumerate does. Although, in this case, it'll give you something that you might not understand right now. Later on, I'll talk about that. But it's really giving you back um, a list of value. So if I actually convert this to a list by calling the list function on the result of that, I get a list of, of values uh, where each one is a pair of values. So for index 0, I get a B. For index 1, I get an A. For index 2, I get an N. Okay. And I'm going to later explain in more detail what these are. These are tuples here, or, or tuples. Some people pronounce it tuples, okay, or tuples. But anyway, so the, 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 the preferred way to get the index and the value, if you want to iterate over the items of a list, is to use this enumerate function. And then if you do that, you can get both of these, the, these pairs, the index and the value in your uh, list um, at the same time, right? And then I can print these out. So it's the, the same like 
we did for our while loop. Okay. Okay. So um, let's talk about slicing for sequences. Um, I think if there's maybe one thing I had to pick out from this video, um, it might be this. So understanding slice, slice slicing, we we use it kind of for everything. Um, um, for the libraries and for all the stuff that we do in machine learning here. So you really should understand the syntax and what we're doing with slicing here, all right? So again, let's say we have a sequence, uh, a string, like Monty Python, right? So um, you can do what are called take slices from a sequence. So in this case, since my sequence is a list of characters or a sequence of characters, the syntax here means give me, the char give me a slice of the sequence starting at index 0 up to but not including 5. So, so it always starts with the first one and it goes up to but doesn't include the last one. So, so the characters are Monty is at 0, uh, M is at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the space is at character 5, but it's not going to include that. So it's only going to include the, the way that most people that are, that are you know, used to using the slicing is it's, you, you read this as, I want the first five characters, the character from the beginning up to the fifth character, which means I want the characters from index zero to four inclusive, right? So, or zero up to, but not including five, all right? Um, so for this kind of, the, so the, the syntax is, you know, instead of giving just a single index like we did up here, um, a, a, a single value that we want to index into there. We give two values separated by a colon, so that gives us a, what's called a slice, right? So if you don't specify the first value, um, zero is assumed, so it's, it's equivalent to say colon five to get the first five characters. But, you know, I, I, if, if I want something other than, than starting at the beginning, so if I want the characters from two up to five, so this is going to be not zero, not one, but, but two, two, three, and four, right? So if I want those three characters, I, I slice from, from two up to, but not including five. So that's, that's NTY, all right? Um, and of course, I can go from the middle to the end of the sequence. So again, here, th there's 12 characters. So the the, the last legal index is 11, so I can go from 6 up to, but not including, 12. So this is from character 6 to 11. So character 5 is the space. So character 6 up to the end is Python. It should be. All right. Uh, and again, you know, it, if it, it assumes that you mean up to the end if you admit the last one. So equivalently, I can say 6 colon nothing else. That gives me six up to however many characters. Of course, you know, this is preferred if you don't, you know, so, so if you don't have the length, and it's definitely preferred to dynamically, you know, uh, querying the length, but that would give you the same thing, right? right. But if you do this, you save um, the, the, the call and the overhead of actually computing the length, because it knows the length when you admit this of, of the sequence that you're trying to slice here. So we can get the middle. Um, so what does this do? So given what we just demonstrated, any idea what this does? This actually gets all the characters. Um, but this is actually a copy of the of the, the values, okay? So um, I probably should have, have, have put in my notebook here. So one thing, when you get it back a slice, it's really a view into the um, into the original sequence. Okay, so what that means, like let, let's say I said x equals this slice, right, and I printed x, so I, I get the same characters, but if I did something like um, um, made a change, let's say character 0 is a, is a capital Z, So, oh, I'm sorry, um, um, we'll have to wait till I get to list to do this. So, so strings are actually immutable, okay? So, so uh, I probably say, uh, yeah, I see uh, just about coming up to that. So, so we can't actually modify the characters of a string, okay? So, so um, I'll try and remember to, to do what I was, the, what I was going to demonstrate right there um, when we get to things that are, that are actually changeable or mutatable, all right? But yeah, strings are immutable, so, so it's illegal for me to do that. 
actually change the character. So, so if I if I really wanted to do that, I would have to do something like um, say, give me give me the characters like that. If I want to change the first character of of this X, I have to say something like um, you know X equals uh, capital Z plus X from one to the end, right? So now I'm slicing off here um, the, the, you know, getting rid of the first character. So, so from the first to the end, so that's the Y space PY. And then I'm going to do a Z at the front. And, and I'll talk about this. So you can actually use a plus operator on strings. But now X will be, the, that was kind of what I was trying to do. So X will be the ZY PY. So replacing the T with a capital Z there. Um, okay, so one final thing about slices, you can actually provide also a step size or a skip, right? So if I want every even character, so character at index 0, and then 2, 4, 6, 8, um, I can, so it'll give me every, every even character. This will give me every odd character, so I start at index 1, then 3, 5, 7, and 9, since I'm skipping by 2. Okay. Um, Oh, um, um, that wasn't the last thing, because, and then the other thing is that you can also use negative indexes in order to index from the end of the array to the beginning. So we we'll use this a lot as well. So if you want the very last character of a, um, of a sequence, like my string here, I can do S minus 1. So since, since the sequence is Monty Python, the last character is in. If I, if I want to get the last two characters, I can again use my slicing, but with negative indexes. So this will get me the characters from <coughs> from two back to, to you know, the, the last two characters, basically, is the way you read that. Okay. Um, and you can use negative steps as well. So if I want to go backwards in a string, I can use like a negative step size, negative one, negative two. So here, by default, this will start at the last character and step backwards to the first character. So this is kind of a, a simple way to reverse the string. Um, all right, so I already demonstrated that strings are immutable. So if I have a string, you might be tempted, like if I wanted to change it to Jello World instead of Hello World, um, I could try and set the, the character zero to be J. Um, but um, that won't work here because we'll get a, a, a type error um, because of the immutability of strings, right? So, and, and like I already demonstrated, to, to, to do that, you really have to create a new string where you get the part of the original string that you want and do some manipulation like appending or prepending or inserting or something like that. Okay. Um, um, there are, op uh, um, the plus operator is overloaded on strings to do concatenation. So if I want to do like hello plus a space plus a world, um, that will create a new string that concatenates those three together. So that can be useful. Um, star is is defined to do repetition on string, so it's overloaded for repetition. So I get 10 copies of spam with a space after it, and then I do um, um, a append of spamity spam, spamity spam here at the end, right? So we're creating another string here. Um, Okay, and string, so we, we talked about for a, um, in the previous video, that when, when you have something in its a namespace, uh, you can use the dot operator to access things in there. So, so when you create a new string, it's, it's an instance of an object, and we'll talk a little bit about object-oriented uh, programming in Python here um, um, in a bit at the end here. Uh, but there are member methods that I can call, so, so you, you can click on here to see... Um, all the, the, the member methods, so you can do things like uh, center a string and capitalize it and um, format it and find a substring in a string and, and, and lots of different things, right? So we can use the built-in directory function to see kind of all these names of the methods anyway, right? So here's a few examples. So, so S is currently um, the string, oh, it's, the, it's currently just a string, all right? So if we um, 
there's the string again. So if we do an uh, uppercase, so again, the, we're using that dot notation and we're calling one of the member methods for a string. So we can make it uppercase by calling upper. Uh, we can find a sub. We can find the first index of a substring. So this works if you want to just find the first character. So, so the, the the character s, the first character s is at index two in the string here, but it'll also find substrings. So i and g, the first occurrence of i and g starts at index five for my string here. Capitalize is different than uppercase, so it will capitalize the first letter letter of a string, although it doesn't do anything in this case because the first character was capitalized already. Split we'll probably use a lot, so if you do a split, by default it splits on white space. So to create multiple strings, splitting it up by spaces or tabs or new lines or whatever, right? So we end up with two strings in this case when we split our original string, um, A and then string. So, uh, oh, uh, yeah, so, oh, strip uh, removes white space from the beginning and ending of string. So if we ever do any machine learning where we got uh, um, data that's, that's in string format, we might have to clean it up a bit. So this is a common thing to clean it up, remove stuff at the end that's spaces or tabs and remove stuff at the beginning, right? Um, Another thing for sequences, uh, you ought to be familiar with the in operator. So, you know, you don't have things like this in, in C or Java. So in allows you to, it's basically like uh, a way of, of calling the find, except that the result is just simply true or false, okay? So, um, and again, this will work for um, uh, any kind of sequence. So for, for lists and actually for dictionaries and sets and things. Um, so I'm trying to remember to demonstrate that and all those. So, but if I want to find out whether nana is a substring in banana, I can do in. Um, seed in apple is not true because that substring doesn't appear anywhere in, in our string here. Um, but it does appear in here, right? So seed is, is a substring of bird seed. Okay. Um, comparison operators are, com are defined for strings as well as for like lists and tuples as well. So, uh, for many sequences. So here for strings, the way it works is you'll get an alphabetical ordering. So alphabetically, apple is b before banana. So it's true that apple is before or less than banana. Um, and, and grape is less than or equal to granite is not true because the first place that these differ is at the P and the N. And P comes after N. So it's not the case that, that this is before that alphabetically. Can do comparison. You can do whether things two strings are equal or not. Uh, you do have to be aware that um, um, actually uppercase and lowercase letters um, may not be sorted or sequenced the way that you would normally expect them to, right? So uh, if you compare banana to apple, but banana, so so the uppercase letters come before all lowercase letters in the sequence of characters. So um, it's not true, I mean, it's true that bananas before apple because uppercase B, all uppercase letters are before all lowercase letters, okay? So if you really need to compare ordering without regard to case, you're, you're going to have to first um, convert the things to, to lowercase. So you can do something like... So by the way, I can actually even call these methods on things that are string constants, right? So it's a string constant, but uh, Python then will, will take this, convert it into a string object, and then you, know, you can use the regular methods on that. So if I do banana lower is less than um, apple lower, that's um, false, right? Because banana all lowercase is is not before Apple. Apple should should come first alphabetically. All right. Okay. So um, so strings, you know, we'll use a lot, but but probably the most important or fundamental container in Python is just a general list. Okay. So list is also a sequence. So everything I just talked about for a string, and, and I'll probably kind of skip over it, go really quickly here, but everything I just talked about for the string as a sequence applies to lists. So you can slice them, you can index them, um, you can find the length of them and, and stuff like that. 
uh, but but a list is a, is a sequence of arbitrary types instead of a se so strings are a sequence of all characters. List can be a, a sequence of all kinds of different types. All right. And the other thing is that, like we just saw, strings are not mutatable, but a list is. So you can actually modify the values of a list in place. Or, and, and the other thing that that also means that I can actually change the list. So I can like append things onto the list or pre pin pre things to the beginning of the list or insert things in the middle or pop and push things off a list and stuff like that. All right. So um, another thing I mean that I want to that I usually like to warn people that are coming from C or Java here though is lists are a much higher level um, data type than like an array. Okay. So, so I mean, it looked kind of like an array because you can index it, but because lists are mutatable and, and they, they can shrink and grow um, and you can mutate them and because they, you, you can have, they, they're non-homogenous, you can have data types of any and all different types inside of a list, they are much, 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 much more powerful and higher level than like a, than, than an array in C or C++, okay? And so a, a basic array in C or C++ is, is homogenous. All the, the values in the array have to be of the same type. Um, and it is static, so it can't really grow and shrink easily, and, and there's, there's lots of differences like that, okay? Okay, so, so you can have lists of, of all of the same type, so I, integer values is all of integers and flavors is, is all of strings. But like I was saying, lists are non-homogenous, so I can have like a list um, of a bunch of different types, right? Um, so, you know, I got a string and an integer and a floating point value in here and, and a complex number in here, right? Um, a, a list can be, we, we can use composition to have lists inside of lists, Right, so here the, the list L contains a, a, a sublist in here. Um, okay, and then like I already said, so so you know all the things that we said about the the sequence for the string um, applies to lists here. So you know I can index into it, so I can get the last item. So the last item is actually this last list in here. That that's one item. Yes, you know, last item, right? Um, I can slice a list so I can get the values from one from index one up to three. So that's one up to but not including three. Um, I can iterate over a list like using a for loop and if I want to iterate over the list and also their indexes I can use that enumerate again. Uh, but lists are uh, mutable, mutatable. Um, so we can change the items in a list. So, so if we have a list of cheeses, the item at index zero is cheddar, but I can change like the first and last item, change the first one to Danish blue and the last one to Stilton. So now, you know, I've got a new list, um, but um, um, the first one is Danish blue and the last one is Stilton, okay? Um, oh, and now that I just thought about it, before I move on completely from slicing, so if you take a slice into a list, like my cheeses list here, so um, let's say, let's just call it X, is uh, cheeses from one to the end, okay? Let's spell it right here, C-H-E-E-S-E-S, -E -E -S, right? Um, so that's two, but, but you have to be careful that, I mean, these are just um, views into the list, is that right? I hope I'm not saying the wrong thing here. So. Um, so if I change in this slice, so if I change Edom, Edom, to something, um, like, um, uh, or you did cheddar, um, um, about, um, um, jeez, oh <laughs> um, uh, uh, ricotta, or something like that, right? Um, so that, of course, changes my first one of X. Um, okay, so yeah, I'm wrong. So, so yeah, when you do a slice, it makes, 
it, it does actually make a copy of the value, so it's not a view in there. So, so my original cheeses is still this, okay? So I, I'm thinking, I'm thinking way ahead. So next week we're going to talk about NumPy arrays, okay? So NumPy arrays, um, when you do slicing, they uh, actually make views into the NumPy array instead of making copies like this, and that's for efficiency reasons, okay? But so, but that's a big difference between lists and NumPy arrays. So yeah, so for a list though, yeah, if you do do slices, you actually get copies of the value, so it's safe to change your your copy. You won't be affecting the original one. So. Um, okay. So let's go over. Yeah, I mean we've seen some examples of iterating over our list. Oh uh, yeah, if we iterate over the list L, notice that we get the elements, but the last element is actually all these, right? So um, here's an example like uh, of using some introspection. So we can use the built-in type function to see if if we ever come across while we're iterating over our original list, if we come across an, another item that is itself a list. And if we see that, we iterate over it. So that's why we 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 display the the whole list. But then we go into this if statement and we iterate over the subvalues of the list there. All right. Um, so plus and star are also defined for lists, so they do the same thing as like for strings. So you can do concatenation of lists using a plus to concatenate things together. And you can use star to do some repetition. So if I have a list of values one, two, three, four, um, if I do star four, that'll repeat it multiple times. So, so we might use that. You know, it's very handy to, to build up some complex data structures using concatenation and repetition like that. So, um, so we've probably co already covered all these. So, so some more examples of slicing. Everything we talked about for sequence, uh, for the string sequence, you can do with the list sequence for slicing, you know, so getting in the middle, getting all the values up to the end, uh, from the beginning up to some value, or from the middle somewhere to the end, or using uh, step sizes to like reverse the list and those kinds of things, all right? Um, and lists like strings have their own set of methods, so you can, um, you can look at these links to see common sequence operations. So these, these operations will be, you'll be able to call for any sequence like a string or a list um, and these for just sequences that are mutatable, like a list here. So, um, so, so I just go through. So, so we can you know, like reverse lists. We can sort them, um, append stuff on the end, um, and you can treat lists. So um, there is no kind of. Uh, actually, there probably are, if, if you go search, like in libraries, if, if you want something that's more explicitly like a stack or a queue. Uh, but, but the basic list has some functions, so, so you, can, you, can, you can use a, a list as a stack if you need a stack data type. It has like a pop, to, 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 so you can use a pin as like your push and then pop to remove the items. So think of this at the end of the list as the top of the stack, right? So if we pop some more values off there, um, uh, we'll, we'll empty off the list. You can also use append um, and, and pop. You can actually have use the given index to say which location. So it's actually like pop is actually um, more like, a, like a, a, a remove item from a particular index. So by default, it, it always removes the last item. But if I say pop zero, it'll remove the first item. So you can use that to implement a basic queue. So append onto the end uh, becomes like a push onto the, your queue, and pop from index zero becomes the um, the dequeue from the head of the list. All right. So. Um, all right. So that was a list. Um, another high-level container that's available in Python are dictionaries. So these, um, you, you actually, like in, 
C++ and Java. There are dictionaries, so C++ in the standard template library has maps. The Java library has maps. I find you know a lot of even graduate students haven't used maps uh, or hash. These are called maps sometimes, or key value pairs, or hashes sometimes. But dictionaries are, are extremely useful uh, data types, so we'll use these a lot. Um, so basically, let's see here, the, the, the single quotes and double quotes are for string sequences. The, the square brackets, open and close brackets, are for list sequences. And the, the open and closed uh, squiggly braces um, are what are normally used syntactically for dictionaries. All right. So a dictionary is a, is a set of key value pairs. Okay. The way I think of dictionaries is um, a dictionary is, is like a list, but more general. Okay. So instead of like, like lists, um, sequences or string sequences, you can only index into the sequence by an integer index. So in, index zero, index one, index two, so on, right? So a dictionary is an arbitrary mapping where the index, instead of being an integer, is um, a key. Uh, and the key, it could be an integer index, doesn't have to be, but it could be a string, um, it could be a floating point number, um, it could be something more complex. Um, so, so, so here, the, the basic thing of, of a dictionary, so there's a small dictionary, um, so, so when you, if you want to initialize a dictionary, you give, here we're using strings for the keys and integers for the value, right? So you can index, so we use curly braces when we're defining it, but we use the square braces for some reason, I'm not certain why, but we use square braces when we're going to index into the dictionary, but now we're not using we're we're not using integers. We're using whatever the type is of the keys that I used for my dictionary, which is strings in this case, right? So I can I can pull out the key, the, the value associated with the key Newton 1642, or with this key, right? Um, if a key isn't in a dictionary, this, this is kind of like indexing beyond the end of an array, you know, so an invalid index. Um, so if I ask for a key that's not in the dictionary, we'll get a key error. Right. Um, length and in work for, um, for dictionaries. Okay, so length and in are actually more generic than than for sequences, so, so they work for most any kind of container. So if you ask for the length of a dictionary, you get the number of key value pairs in there, which makes sense. I've got five currently in my dictionary. If you ask for in, um, this will ask. This is asking whether the key is a key in the dictionary. Okay, so harder in, is a key in the dictionary, so that'll be true. Um, so is Einstein, but Hopper um, is, is not a key in the dictionary, so that's false, all right? Um, dictionaries are mutatable, like lists, so um, I can add new values to the dictionary simply by assigning a value to a new key. So, so my missing Hopper, I can give her a birthday, and um, James Maxwell, I can give him a birthday, right? So now after we've done that, we've actually, um, I, I didn't show, like, you can append and stuff on lists. I kind of skipped over that a little bit quickly, but here we, we were kind of, of of appending or expanding our dictionary here with some new key value pairs, right? And now Hopper is in the um, the dictionary. Um, dictionaries have methods, so I should probably go ahead and kind of move on here. But you know, you can get a list of all the keys. So this actually returns a it's a dict keys, but it's, 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 you know, you can think of this as basically a list. So it's a, it's a list of the keys in the dictionary, or you can get a list of the values, um, which are the, the birthdays here. Um, and you can iterate over these lists. So if I want to iterate over the keys, I can do that. Uh, and here I'm iterating over the keys and then I'm accessing, um, the values by using my dictionary indexing. Right? Um, the default, if you just do for key and birthday, is to get the key. So this is actually a bit redundant or unnecessary. So I can iterate over the keys directly by, by just saying for key and birthday, right? 
Um, if you want to iterate over the keys in a sorted order, so um, one thing about these dictionaries is they're not guaranteed to be in any particular order because it's using hashing, if you know what that is, um, in order to implement a, 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 a big O uh, of one um, time to, 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 to read a value out of the, the dictionary, right? So if I want to get these in sorted order by keys, I can get the keys out and, and call the sorted function, um, and that will then sort the keys, and then I can access them in a sorted way. Right? Um, okay, in any case, so, so dictionaries are really useful. We'll use these a lot. So a lot of methods in the libraries that we use um, Sometimes they return tuples that we'll talk about. I think in our the, it's the very next thing here. Sometimes they return dictionaries. So so very complex functions from libraries might return a dictionary with a bunch of information where the keys are different things that different results, and and then we can access different results by using the key to get the the, the value of the result. Okay. Um. So, but, but we might also need to use dictionaries um, for different applications. So they're very good for doing things like uh, we can count up all the f frequency of characters by using a dictionary. So basically what we're doing, um, um, if you look at this loop, is we create an empty dictionary, but then we, we go through this big string one character at a time. Uh, and, and every time we check it, it and, and we increment a, a count for each character. Um, and, and we're saving it basically in this dictionary, okay? So at the end, you, we can see uh, we're actually sorting now um, by our values here. So this is an example of sorting by the, the values of the dictionary because we wanted to display the most common character was a blank space, but then the, the second most common character was, was the value, was the vowels E, I, A, as you can see, and so on, right? Um, Okay, so the next uh, data type I want to talk about are tuples or tuples. Uh, you call it tomato, I'll call it tomato kind of thing. So people call it, people pronounce it both ways. Um, so a tuple is really just a sequence. So a tuple is really just like a list, okay? Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a sequence of values, and the values can be of, of any type. So that's a list so far. The difference, though, is that it's immutable like the string sequence, okay? So tuples are, are immutable lists, basically. So once you've created it, you can't modify it. And that, that means that tuples can't expand, so that tuples don't have any of the functions like push and pop and append um, um, and things like that, okay? So uh, we normally, so, so to, to define a tuple, all you have to do is give a list of values um, separated by commas, right? Um, although it's not necessary, but you'll also commonly see people use parentheses around a tuple, so you can do it either way. But but uh, but syntactically, actually, although you know, again, it would make more sense because you know we use square brackets for for lists, and we use the the curly brackets for dictionaries. So I used to always think that that um, a, a regular parentheses was a tuple. Um, but anyway, so. So again, all of the, 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 the things, I'm just going to skip over these, is, is that you, know, you can index into a tuple, you can iterate over the tuple, um, but the tuple is immutable. So unlike a list, but like a string, if I try and modify like a, a value to a different value, you'll get a, um, a type error. But we can do comparison operators. So as I mentioned, in general, for sequences, uh, the comparison operators um, not only just equals and not equals, but less than, greater than, or define. So like for a string, what it does is it compares it character by character or item by item of the tuple. And the first one that differs will be the, the one that that is um, significant for the comparison. Okay. So here, since three, since, since one and two are equal, the first two 
uh, items, but three differs from four. Since three is less than four, this is going to evaluate to true, right? But if we compare this tuple to that tuple, three is not less than two, so this would evaluate the false. Right? The main thing, the main reason that I wanted to make certain that you saw tuples um, was for this, okay? So um, this is used a lot in Python and, and a lot in our examples for notebooks for this class. So if I, uh, for, so for one, I mean, this is kind of a trivial thing, but if I want to assign a list of values to a list of variable names, um, I can do it on a single line. So this is what's known as tuple assignment, right? So by doing that, begin gets assigned one and end gets assigned zero. So I'm, I'm assigning each individual item of a tuple, there's two values in this tuple, to each individual item of this tuple, which are, which are variables, uh, variable names. So it could be more complex, right? So, so I assign a string to this one and um, an integer to, to this one um, and a floating point value to this one and I actually assign a whole dictionary to this one, right? Um, you can actually use this as kind of a trick for swapping things. So, um, so AB equals BA will actually swap them around. But probably the most important thing to understand about tuples is that um, a common thing to do is that many functions that we'll be using in libraries, if they need to return more than one value, they return it as a tuple, okay? So technically, strictly speaking, um, a function in Python can only return one thing, but if you just return a container, like a list or a tuple or a dictionary, I mean, you're, you're in effect returning multiple results, right? And all of those are used, okay? But tuples are used a lot. So I think we already saw the div mod previously. Um, so div mod actually returns a tuple. So if I assign the, re the return result from div mod, I, result actually holds a tuple now, um, which we can see if we ask for the type, right? Uh, but like, like I was doing for the, the, the tuple, tuple assignment up above here, if I need to, I can um, assign the individual values um, from a function that's returning a, a tuple um, to individual variables, okay? So I can get the quotient and the remainder instead into two different um, variables here so I can access them by name more um, conveniently, all right? Um, and you can, you can um, do that yourself with your own value returning functions, right? So I can return, I can create a function that finds the minimum and maximum of, of things in a list and returns that as, as, as a tuple, right? So here one is the minimum that we return and um, nine is the maximum, right? Um, and now I'm thinking about, so, okay, so also don't forget that, you know, you can also return like a dictionary, which is a fairly common thing as well in scikit-learn and some of the other libraries that we'll be using. Um, and you can return a list, although, um, it's preferred to use a, a tuple rather than a list um, if, if you're going to return just multiple values as a sequence of things. So. Um, so let me show an example of this zip function real quickly. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see this again. Um, probably, I think we're going to break this video up into two videos since um, this is taking a little bit longer than I was thinking. Um, so, so zip is a very useful function. You'll see it a lot. So basically all zip does is it takes two sequences, actually it takes two or more sequences, um, and then it, it creates tuples of corresponding pairs, okay? So if I zip S and T together, um, I'm going to return these one at a time as pairs. So A1, uh, B2, C3, and uh, D4. Um, and again, this is really just returning a tuple. So here, like I was doing above, the whole tuple gets assigned to uh, this pair variable. But if you want to, uh, if something is returning a tuple inside of an iteration like this, um, so if I, if I know the tuple always has two items, I can assign them, in, I can do tuple assignment and assign them individually to separate variables. So, so now I've got the, the character in a variable called char inside the loop and the, the, the value, the integer in, inside of a variable called value inside the loop, right? Um, uh, 
And like I said, you know, zip will actually work with three or four or more lists. So, so if you zip three things together, it, you'll get a, a three. You'll get a list of three tuples. So one. Um, so ID is first. So one Alice forty two followed by two Bob thirty eight and so on, right? Um, all right. So that's zip. Um, so yeah. So so you know um, we already looked over. Uh, well. Now you can better understand what items does. So if you have a dictionary and you ask for items, so you can ask for the keys or the values from a dictionary um, as a member method, but you can actually also ask for the items. If you ask for items, you'll get a tuple, you know, so a list of tuples, uh, which are the key value pairs, basically. Right? So you can use that to, to iterate over all the key value pairs. Right? Um, so, and um, you can actually use very complex things as keys into dictionaries. So just as a quick example, you can actually use a tuple as a key into a dictionary. So here we're using a tuple of last name, first name for our dictionaries here. And, and then we can access the dictionary by last name, first name to get the, the value by these tuple keys, last name, first name. All right. Um, Okay, and then kind of one final thing, and then I, I think I won't talk about list comprehensions in this video. Um, and I'm going to leave, I'm going to split this into two videos here. Um, so th there's, there's a couple of other kind of built-in data types, but, but I also just wanted to mention sets real quickly because uh, these are very useful as well. So we could use a dictionary because the, the way that, that you insert keys into a dictionary, it's set-like. You can only have one uh, key uh, of, of a particular value in a dictionary, all right? So that's kind of the same. A set is like a dictionary but with no corresponding value. But, but each item in a set is unique, okay? That's, that's kind of how I think about that, right? So... Um, so when we when we use the dictionary to keep the counts of the characters, I mean that's one thing you can do. But if we just need to know what the the list is of unique characters or the list of unique words without the counts of those, we could just use a regular set instead of a whole dictionary to do that. So for example, uh, using that same text, but now if I want to count up, if I want to find the list of the unique words instead of characters, um, I can use the split function for strings. This, again, remember, this will break it up by white space. So it will break it up in, so I get a list of words one by one out of here. And what I do is uh, I start with an initially empty set, and then I add each word in the set. So if the word's already in the set, adding it doesn't do anything. But if the word is not in the set, um, it, it adds that new value to the set. So sets are like mathematical sets here. Right? So if you look at the words after doing this, th this is the list of all the unique words in that text that we have. Um, all right, and then sets, you know, you, you can use in to check for set membership. So uh, we can ask whether the, the value VEL is in words, which is true. We can see it um, um, right here. But we can ask if vellum is in there, but that's not a word that was in our original text, right? You can get set differences by using minus or using the difference operator. So... Right. Both of those should give you the same thing, right? So that's basically what characters um, are in set one that are not in set two, which is just A and D, right? right? If you do it the other way, what characters are in set two that aren't in set one? Uh, well, B and C are in there, so you end up. So the empty set is represented by an empty set, right? Um, Yeah, and I'm surprised. I mean, plus, for some reason, wasn't defined for um, set unions. Um, but, uh, but yeah, if you want the, the union, so, so you get the set difference, but you can also get the set union to, to, to find the union of two sets, all right? Um, all right, so I'll let you, you kind of read about list comprehensions yourself. So list comprehensions aren't really a data type. They're just something you can do.
with uh, Python. So, um, with that, so, so I'm going to stop this video. I'm going to um, split this into two videos then. So I'll have a second video where I go over the um, objects and classes and um, functional programming in Python after this one. All right. So hopefully that helps you kind of get a feel for the, the different data types um, and containers that you can use in Python and how to use them. Um, and uh, with that, then um, um, you should go ahead and go on to the next video once you're ready.